Do you do the honors? <laughs> Welcome to another Midnight Review. Uh, I'm DJ. I'm Kelly. And we just got out of uh, Taken 3. Or as we like to call it, we'll find you. <laughs> we'll kill you. No, wait. <laughs> I can't even say the damn quote right. <laughs> Liam Neeson the movie. Liam Neeson the movie. Ah, uh, no, I think that really the, um, uh, <laughs> uh, Walk Among the Tombstones is Liam Neeson the movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, non spoiler version. I don't think this is worth seeing in theaters. <laughs> Maybe wait till Redbox or get the cheap sheets when it cheap seats. Bleh, cheap it, sheets. <laughs> cheap sheets. <laughs> uh, cheap seats when it goes to Cinema Six. Maybe, but now it's '90s cheese fun for this generation. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I was actually kind of surprised. Uh, the this one was actually written by the original creators of the movie. I was kind of. I was kind of iffy on this whole movie, especially with the trailer. Trailer is a little misleading. It is. But... I don't remember the trailer at all. Maybe because I wasn't paying attention at the oh, time. Oh, it basically just shows a couple shots of uh, uh, Liam Neeson and his ex-wife. But the way they show it, it makes you think that they've gotten back together since the last movie. Yeah. Which means they completely dumped Stuart. <laughs> I it's would, not the case in the movie, by the way. Yeah, I would <laughs> think after... I never saw the second one, so I was kind of going into this blind. The setup was just weak. The action was awesome. The setup was weak in the second one, though. <laughs> it was so weak. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you don't really need to know about the second one, which... Yeah, because they made a franchise out of a movie that didn't need to be a franchise. The first one was... The first and the third one are pretty much 90s cheese fun. Is all it is. Except I don't know about the first one. I wouldn't call it that. The year two thousand. Yeah. <laughs> I never saw. Two thousand four. Was it four or four? was it six? I can't remember if it was four or six that the first one came out. Ah, it doesn't matter. I thought it was like two thousand eleven, two thousand twelve. No, no. What the fudge? No, no. The, Taken was one of the first movies I saw uh, uh, after I started working at Cinema Six. Really. Yeah, pretty sure it came out in 2008, 2006. Holy crap. Uh, but yeah, the, the first one is based off of a, a French movie by the same name. And that's one of the things that made it kind of controversial because it had that torture scene inside of it. Yeah. Which they've been trying to recreate. And this one they didn't even try to recreate it. <laughs> this time they just went with the easy torture device that everyone all of a sudden... Everyone and their dog's done. Yeah. But, it... Yeah, so... More of spoilers in this one. Now, it's... This does not hold up compared to the first one. At all. I'll admit the setup is a little bit better uh, than the second one. Hell, it's actually a lot better than the second one, actually. <laughs> the second one's setup was horrible. Yeah. Uh, he's doing a job for those friends to help him out later in the film. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's supposed to be a cakewalk. Nothing's supposed to happen. So he invites uh, Lenny and uh, uh, his daughter to go with them. And that's basically the setup for the second one. Mm -hmm. The people who tracked, uh, tracked him down from the first one. And they made it sound like... I remember there being a cliffhanger ending in the second one that involved the organization they... The, everyone actually worked for coming after them for killing not just the people the French team but the people in Istanbul that's not what this one plays off of hmm. and this one uh, apparently two years has passed yeah. <laughs> and everybody knows about what happened in France and Istanbul yeah I'm pretty sure you would have been uh, uh, what's the word um, extradited to Istanbul <laughs> For throwing the grenades around, <laughs> but again, apparently everyone knows about those. Um, yeah, Stewart's played by a new actor from the first one, who is much younger, <laughs> a lot younger. <laughs> and in fact, they don't even look anything the same. And the business dealing is different too from the first one. <laughs> well, Bruce Banner got uh, plastic surgery twice, so twice. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't get it again. <laughs> I don't know. They're keeping Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. And he hasn't been doing many other films now that he's kind of in the Marvel yeah. scene. 
Which I, I, he I did now. You see me. That was yeah. a good one. And he did uh, another one. Uh, uh, it's we're, a romance. We're thing. getting into like yeah, three tension. different, <laughs> three different entirely different franchises. <laughs> yeah, but uh, basically, uh, Lenny and Stewart aren't doing very hot, and Lenny comes to Liam Neeson to try to just find out some way of getting out of this, and as much as she wants to apparently bang her ex-husband. <laughs> He is honorable. We all laughed at that line. Yeah. <laughs> yes, honorable. Uh, you can live the shit out of people from behind corners. <laughs> honorable. Uh, but he he can't cross it, and he says, when this is all said and done, come back then. Very mature. Thing. But he get, he still wants to uh, be there for her, so he gives her a key. He's going to go away for a job in, a few, uh, in about a week, so if you need a place to lay low and talk or <laughs> not talk gives her a key was it the next day or is it like two days after or something like that yeah and two days after Lenny basically texts, it, texts him saying that she needs to talk go get bagels yeah. he goes gets bagels comes back and sh her throat is slashed on his bed and like an idiot he picks up the knife yeah just put your Bloody fingerprints on there. Yeah, it's yeah. perfectly fine. But, yeah, and that's how the whole debacle starts up. I mean, the setup is a lot stronger than the second one. Yep. Cop, cops bust in, think that he's the one. And... With so many red flags. I'm sorry, I know I've bitched about stupid cops before, <laughs> especially in Nightcrawler, but... You got a... You got a call. Ten minutes before you bust in here about a woman screaming, saying she's going to kill me, she's going to kill me. Anonymous, by the way. <laughs> None of the neighbor neighbors or anything. And you instantly break in, see him standing over the dead corpse, him saying, I didn't do this. I didn't do this. Well, anyone could say I didn't do this. They started shooting at him in the chase, though. He showed no signs of fighting back. All he did was uh, knock out those two guys and then jump out the window. Yeah. He left their gun behind, for God's sake. Yeah, the <laughs> For Forrest Whitaker plays the uh, chief uh, of the police. I think it was a uh, head detective. Yeah, head detective. And he even says, you didn't... He did. He had the gun, but he didn't shoot at you. <laughs> Are they I mean, satirizing their own movie? I, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I, they tried to make. They made Forrest Whitaker out to be the smart cop who actually did anything. The other cops hated him. I thought they were all going to pull guns on him at the end. Of the scene. Yeah. <laughs> I really thought that uh, one of them was going to turn out to be a, a paid off. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and it's the setup is just kind of. It is better. It's just we've seen this movie before. We've seen this setup, and it's even not even that big of a twist when uh, Stewart, when they find out about the Russians and Stewart's involvement to not involvement to yeah. back involvement, it's I don't know. The movie just doesn't feel as original as the first Taken did. Because it probably isn't. Yeah, it isn't. I mean, it was right, written by the same uh, creators, so kudos there. Mm. I just kind of wish that there was a little bit more meat, I guess. Call it. Yeah, the only difference is instead of them going after his daughter and having the whole Russian prostitute ring thing going on, they... Oh, that, that was uh, Arab, by the way. Arab. Arab. We, we have to get our racial stereotypes. Because <laughs> there is so many racial stereotypes inside of the all three of these films. <laughs> yeah, they're after Liam Neeson because... They think he's he killed his wife. Yeah. And I'll admit, I'm kind of... I kind of like the idea. The first... The first one was uh, someone took something from him. The second film, they tried to take him. And then the third one, they took his family permanently away. Yeah. I, I kind of like the idea there. Yeah. It just... They should have gone full force. And there should have been a lot more interaction with the Russians. Yeah. Who were basically the primary bad guy. That would have made the twist a lot stronger. But, yeah, it's... You've seen this movie before. It's nothing to write home about. There's, there's plenty of moments to laugh at, though. <laughs> <laughs> Clear. 
<laughs> Product placement aplenty. Oh, yes. Blackberry, <laughs> Lay's, potato chips, Dos Equis, mostly vodka. A lot, mostly, a lot, of, a lot, lot of, of alcohol a product lot of placement. Alcohol. Because Russians. <laughs> <laughs> because Russians. As I said, racial stereotyping. <laughs> they're, all, they're, they're all in their pad smoking and drinking. Uh, oh, gosh. It's, it, it's just... And Liam Neeson's a ninja. Liam Neeson's a freaking ninja. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we do need to bring up the one time where his ninja skills would not get him out of the situation. <laughs> he did everything right, by the way. So the cops basically have him cornered inside of a, a school where he tried to contact the daughter. Yeah, oh and my to, gosh. And to get, a, to get out, he, uh, he set a fire. Uh, that triggered the uh, alarm and sprinklers to get everyone to a panic and he'd go out with the crowd and the cops wouldn't be able to find him. <laughs> Two problems with this one. He's and almost seven th feet tall. He is six foot five. The tallest person in that scene is maybe five ten. <laughs> You stick he's, out like a sore thumb. He's at least three times <laughs> older than anybody there who's not a cop. And even better, and point two, the cops saw him. Yeah. The cops saw him right before he lit the fire. They are not that far behind. I know that Fortis Whitaker isn't the most um, physically fit actor, but I'm pretty sure he would have been able to get down that hall fast enough to see him try to blend in the cloud, <laughs> and then see a six foot five Liam Neeson looking guy trying to leave. <laughs> Token bear. I slouch. <laughs> hey, it's like, hey, that guy looks like qui gon Jin. <laughs> oh my god, is that Russell Ghoul? <laughs> wow. Oh, I'm getting a picture of this shit. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, th there's plenty of moments like that where you're just like, okay, my suspension of disbelief might be a little shattered at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> like, the car at the very end. You, you saw it in the trailer where he, like, slides the car to knock the wheel off of the plane that's trying to take off. That was awesome, by the way. That was <laughs> awesome. But it runs through a, a fence link fence. This is like one of those fully military, uh, or not military, but uh, one of those fully reinforced gates. Yeah. He runs through it. Car's fine. He knocks off this this plane's uh, front landing gear. Oh, car's fine. <laughs> and in the subsequent shots, there's not even a scratch on that damn Porsche. <laughs> that, all of that, all those problems aside, I put that scene up there with Ghost Rider lighting the crane on fire and Ghost in the second one. That was awesome. Or, or uh, 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 Ghost Rider when he like tags the, the helicopter, you're pissing me off. Just yeah. one of those stupidly awesome moments of <laughs> stupid. Uh, <laughs> and there's, there's a lot of good action bits inside of here. I mean, as much as we make fun of the product placement, that, that fight scene inside of the... Uh, bar is kind of cool. Yeah, pretty much any fight scene basically has, is, has the writers or whoever at Liam Neeson's feet <laughs> kissing them. <laughs> yeah. Just well, making it the most badass. I don't know. The last fight with the final Russian in his Speedo. Yeah, no. In which I'm pretty sure, I'm going to call it now, but when this, un when this comes out, there's going to be an unrated version because we definitely saw a couple of really bad dubs on there. <laughs> you were screwing my wife, or mathing up. <laughs> yeah, but. they edited this. I like caught that. I didn't think I would. I almost turned to him like, "Did you see that?" <laughs> it's like it's edited for TV or something. Yeah, I am sick of these mother father snakes on this Monday to Friday plane. <laughs> <laughs> And that's exactly what they did with the first one, and they tried to do it with the second one, but nah. The, the first one had that. They cut a lot of the fight scenes down, actually, in the first one. And then the extended edition, they actually did have something to put on there. The fight scenes were longer, and they were a little bit better choreographed. <laughs> it also proves that apparently Liam Neeson doesn't feel pain, but... 
I much more believe that he emptied his entire clip and threw the gun at the guy's face for taking his <laughs> daughter and putting her, prancing her around, addicting her to drugs, and trying and selling her to some fat Arab. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that 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 would that would justify him emptying the entire goddamn clip in him. But yeah, there's moments where you could actually see that they did that. But I'm calling it right now. When that edit, when that unrated version comes out. That scene with the Russian inside the bathtub, oh my gosh. those two girls are going to be topless, oh and he's God. not going to be wearing his Speedo at all Ew. throughout that fight scene. Ew. I am calling that right now. <laughs> I mean, it was completely believable. I mean, he just ran and grabbed the gun. Yeah. Did, did he have a robe on? Or is it just him in the Speedo? Yeah, it was like a robe and him in the Speedo. Yeah. I mean, it was completely believable, and he took a... Uh, place right in front of the door. How the hell did he miss when he walked in the door? I, I would have believed a graze or something like that, but no, he outright misses with this uh, bad aim in Nicholas Cage in <laughs> um, Face Off. Damn it, son of a bitch! <laughs> this guy's got this fully automatic shooting what looked like 50 caliber machine Machine gun round, just and he's they're twenty feet away. You have the high ground too. You have to pause it. The bullets are literally <laughs> just bouncing off of Liam Neeson's awesomeness. <laughs> and then when he finally grabs Liam Neeson's gun, then he can finally shoot him and have it do damage. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm really surprised that his friends actually made it out of this movie. I thought they were gonna kill him off when they mm -hmm. pulled the trip, the twist, but. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we should probably wrap this up and get going. But, um, <laughs> yeah, final recommendation. Yeah, the red box at best. Yeah. Netflix. Uh, Cinema 6, cheap seats at, at worst. <laughs> it's, it's nothing to cry home about. It's nothing to say, oh, it's the greatest action movie ever. I mean, if you it's want a not. better Liam Neeson film, go watch Walk Among the Tombstones. Or the first Taken. Or the first Taken. <laughs> but I, I think that they need to watch Walk on the Tombstones just to see Lee Neeson taser guy in the dick. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and then uh, if you want a better just all-around action film, go see John Wick. <laughs> go see John Wick. <laughs> John Wick. That, that's what this movie felt like. It really did. Yeah. <laughs> a guy out for revenge, shooting everything up. It felt like John Wick. Just with bad guys with even worse aim than stormtroopers. <laughs> so, uh, next week, I don't know what's coming out. Next week is... Uh, Seventh Sun. Seventh Sun, I think. And then uh, there's one other one that was coming out that we were looking at. Isn't that, no, American Sniper's the 30th. I can't remember. Yeah, we'll look it up. So, anyway, see you all. Next time. <laughs>